What's up and welcome everyone to my five tips for beginners in Zero Hour. Zero Hour can be a tough game for new players to hop into without previous experience in any tactical shooters. And I personally came from Rainbow Six Siege and though this game is designed to play a little bit slower than that, a lot of skills seem to translate relatively well. But whether you happen to have experience within Siege or previous tactical shooters, don't worry. These tips will help you get started within Zero Hour and hopefully allow you to feel more at home when you're an average or new player. So first up we need to talk settings. Be sure you're on the main menu when changing these as some of them don't show up in game and won't save. Now your settings will depend on whether you want better frames or competitive play um, or if you rather have the game look better graphics wise. I try to tailor my settings towards competitive play more so. I personally don't care if the game doesn't look as sharp. That is just me though personally so you know do what you feel you want it to look like. So starting in the gameplay tab, let's jump down and start with the uh, tinnitus effect. Now if you love realism and to be ear raped every single time you full auto or stand near a grenade, feel free to keep this checked. However, if you want that advantage of still being able to use your ears mid battle, go ahead and uncheck this. Next, you have your sensitivity settings. Now with these, it's all comfort levels. However, I would suggest trying to keep your ADS sensitivity lower than your standard sensitivity. This allows you to whip around fast without aiming, and then once you acquire your target in your sight and you pull up your gun, you can focus more on accurate shots with less jitter of your mouse or less correcting of your aim because your sensitivity is a little bit slower when you're actually aimed down sights. Next is your field of view. It has a mixed preference of how much you want to see, but also can add advantages. Um, I have become used to playing on the highest FOV for most shooters so that I can see more of my surroundings. Um, if you don't like seeing all of your peripheral and everything that's possible in your screen, I get it. Some people like that more zoomed in feel so they can focus on what's in front of them. But if you use the higher field of view, it also adds a hidden advantage of less visual recoil. But I'll get into that more on another video. The rest of the settings on this page are preference only, so feel free to test them out how you like now heading over to the video tab, some of these settings will depend on your PC, but I always recommend using the highest res you can without sacrificing frames. I set mine to 1920 by 1080. Now we want to turn VSync off as it does nothing but add problems for your aim and mouse movement, so go ahead and uncheck that. Now from here on, this is where it can get a little tricky. Quality can hinder your frames and make the game run a little bit slower if your PC isn't strong enough to run the selected settings but you don't want to sacrifice any competitive advantages. So you want to be able to still see enough on the map and understand what you're looking at without it looking like Play-Doh. So with that in mind, I run medium graphic settings and recommend you experiment with the amount of active shadows you set. The more spotlights, the more shadows on the map you can use to gain information. But it may take a toll on your graphics card depending on what kind you have. So toy with it until it feels right, and some people even feel like there can be too many shadows to look at that brings away from that competitive advantage. So that one you gotta kind of experiment with. Your FPS cap, I personally don't set this. I've heard mixed reviews in that it can provide some benefit within zero hour, but we'll skip it for now as I don't set any cap on it. Um, I let my FPS run to whatever it can achieve. I recommend turning off motion blur, bloom, reflections, depth of field, and ambient occlusion. The motion blur causes your peripheral vision to be blurred anytime you move your weapon, which can be a tactical disadvantage. If you like the realism feel, you can keep it on, but me personally, I like to be able to have a clear peripheral vision, but you know, once again, preference. Bloom and ambient occlusion tend to look cool adding the little halo light around things like cameras, sticky cameras, things of that nature and kind of make it look like a glowy effect. So if you like that, you can keep it on and sometimes it will help you spot cameras in zero hour. But me personally, I like to turn it off. I don't feel like the cameras are too hard to see. Uh, the only one that I guess could be an exception is sticky cameras. But I like the extra FPS boost, so I turn it off. Now depth of field can come down to your comfort as well. If you enjoy being zoomed in every time you aim down sights and feel you need that extra visual range to find and stay on target, then keep it checked. It essentially makes your character look even more zoomed down when you aim down sights. If you uncheck it, you can see that it keeps your standard field of view even when you aim down sights. So for me, with, when I uncheck it and I aim down my scope, 
I can still see a lot in my peripheral vision. If I check it, it's going to be more zoomed in and I'm going to see less around me and more of what the target is in front of me. So personal preference, but I tend to like to be able to see around me. Um, so, you know, experiment with it in the, the shooting range and see what feels more comfortable for you. Um, audio and controls, um, I'm going to let you guys play around with. You can set it to your liking, but keep in mind, audio can be a huge advantage within Zero Hour to gain any information on the enemy. So you don't want to put those too low. So just keep that in mind. So for tip number two. We want to look at your walking, your running, and your sound mechanics. Now, when you load into a game, you may notice a meter in the bottom left of the screen. It tells you your sound level and walk speed. It also controls how fast you aim down sight and how steady your gun may be when aiming. By scrolling your scroll wheel up all the way, your meter will increase and your character will walk faster. Be louder and aim faster, but have less accuracy for precision shots. And obviously, the lower it is, the slower you walk, less sound you make, and more accurate your aim becomes. When starting out, don't be afraid to sprint and walk faster because of the noise level. Just ask yourself, does the enemy know I'm here? If so, don't worry about your sound and instead focus on your enemy, your gun skill, and how you can outplay them. If they aren't aware of your location, it may be beneficial to slow it down and use that to your advantage. Too many times, new players will play an angle or corner very slow when their location is known and end up slow peeking into an enemy that's ready for them. Don't be that guy and instead play with confidence. You will die some, you will win some. As long as you progress, that's all you can ask for. When sprinting, your meter will run down and recharge. If you do not allow the meter to bottom out, then you will be able to continue to keep sprinting as long as the meter is somewhat filled. However, if you sprint and run out of stamina completely, not only will your aim suffer, you will not be able to sprint until the meter recharges to halfway. Tip number three, we wanna look at your loadouts. Now, a lot of times when people are new to the game, they think they can only change their loadouts in game or they change it on the main menu and they don't know why it doesn't save. It can be kind of clunky at times. So when you're on the main menu, you can edit your attachment for each weapon and save them so that you don't have to edit them in between rounds. Make sure you hit the save button in the bottom right. It's not always that obvious for some people, but that's where you wanna save all your loadouts if you don't feel like doing them in game. Don't worry though if you forgot to save some changes or you want to make a change mid-game because you think it will give you a different feel, a different advantage. Each round you'll have a chance to set your guns to your liking. I'd recommend to try and change them at the main menu for the most part however so you can focus on the plan of attacking or your defense round uh, rather than what scope you should have on. When making loadouts you can test them out in the training range but you must equip the attachments in the main menu first for them to show in that range. A lot of new players tend to mag dump each battle. While this isn't a bad option depending on the range and loadout you have, the faster you're moving, if you're out of breath or the gun has more recoil, tap firing or short burst will help you take the target down quicker and with more accuracy. That being said, if you learn your recoil control in the target range uh, and can control it full auto for medium and long range fights, go for it. More power to you. Tip number four, your tack map, how to mark on it and your spawn selection. When you begin each round, you will be able to choose a spawn, and if you're attacking, you will see a attack map allowing you to strategize how you wish to enter and mark where the bomb or the hostage is, if shown. The bomb is shown by vibrational circles on the map in which you can find the correct floor of the map by using your number keys to cycle through the floor numbers. You will then mark items by right-clicking and choosing a marker. In hostage game types, however, you will not always see the vibrations of where the hostage is unless someone fires their gun. So you can have a teammate open their map and find the circles coming from the hostage as you fire your weapon to locate the target a little bit quicker. When it comes to different entries into the building, be aware there are very small angles on most maps that allow the defense a chance to spawn peek as you approach. Whether intended by the devs or not, each map has some sort of spawn exploit, so approach carefully and learn your maps. Don't be discouraged if you fall victim to one as it allows you to learn a new way to attack and defend going further. Tip number five. The lights, the power box, whatever you want to call it, and your night vision. Should you turn the lights out? Now, many new players see night vision and turning out lights as the key to success on attack. That's the first thing they want to go to, but I'm here to tell you, it is not the key to success. 
Most intermediate players have learned to play in the dark with either flashlights, flares, sound cues, or even adjusting their PC settings to see slightly better in the dark. When you turn the lights off as an attacker and plan on using night vision, it actually provides a disadvantage in that you can now only aim over the shoulder and are not as accurate and precise as you would be when you use normal aim down sight mode. The defenders, however, are able to fully aim down sights and be more accurate. Combine that with being able to see slightly better or understanding how to play in the dark better than a newer player and it will end in a frustrating round for you and your friends. So I urge you, if you're new, please practice in the dark. Adjust your settings if need be, but do not think the defense is unable to see you when you turn the lights out. Now there are times turning the lights off can be an advantage, however. If you're an attacker used to playing in the dark and think the defense may struggle or it'll add pressure to them and want to turn them out, it may be helpful. Likewise, there are also some maps like Bank that if you are a defender and you do not turn the power off, the attackers can open the garage and lift the bulletproof windows, allowing even more lines of sight into the building. So as the defense on Bank, I would recommend immediately turning off the power. I may touch on lighting in a more advanced tip video later on, but for now, that about sums this up. Now if you stuck around and are looking for a bonus tip, or maybe some sort of advice to ease your heartache trying to get into a full game because you think this game is slightly dead or it's new and you don't think there's a huge player base, I have an answer for you because I was frustrated as well when I first started playing. On the main menu, they've now added in the bottom left a server browser option. It doesn't look like a button, but it says server browser, so click on it and check out all the available games for each mode. It gives you a player count, what map they're on, what round number they're on, if they have Steam Guard. That way you may not have to wait forever and a day for a game to start. So choose what map you want to play, choose how many players you want to be in, and go ahead and join up. I believe they have co-op and custom matches listed on there as well. I don't know how accurate those counts are though, but the PvP does work. Now if any of the tips I discussed today helped you out at all, you want to hear more tips and tricks, or you have a question, feel free to drop a comment, like the video, and I'll be sure to reply to you. I'll be putting together future tips and trick videos, so be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. And with that, I'm out. See you guys in the next one.